Welcome back, everybody, to day two. We are so excited to be here, and uh, we are going to announce the winners. For those of you who did your homework, we are so excited. So many of you did your homework, which, I mean, you're winning from doing that, right? Because you're taking five minutes and thinking about what would your topic be, which is so good because as you do that, your brain actually starts to invest, and then your creativity starts to deliver momentum around, ooh, what could this look like? And that's a really cool thing to see you guys now starting to live this into life. So I'm so excited for you and we will announce winners and we will give you more homework today and we will give more announcements of what those prizes will be for those of you who do the homework. And anyone who is watching the replays and just commenting on the replay or watching us live, you, if you watch all of them, will be included into a raffle. We will be giving two of you an Apple Watch at the end of the week just to keep you again plugged into accountability because we know that ultimately that will help all of you get the most out of this process. And let's face it, you signed up for this, not to waste your time, but to hopefully learn something. And so often we sign up for things because intentionally we really do want whatever that result is, but then we don't necessarily show up for it. And so we want to keep creating an environment here where you just have more of incentive to show up. But I want to begin by sharing something that is really really at the at the heart of what Colleen was just saying, it's experience that happened to me. So early on in my podcasting days, um, we we started this podcast, as I told you, we were about six months in and uh, and things were really cooking. And it was really a surprise because I remember someone telling me that if I could get 12,000 downloads, you know, that would put me in like the top, you know, 3%. And I'm like, 12,000, like, is my mom going to be able to listen to it from 12,000 different devices? Like, I don't know how that's really going to happen. In any case, we, we wound up getting all of these incredible downloads. And we're going to talk today about engagement and how you create such a thunder that you have a line around the block. But that's what we're going to talk about today. So if you're excited to talk about engagement and building an audience, that's what we're going to talk about today. But what's so cool, what Colleen just said, is that we are so married to, addicted to, committed to things being hard that we don't, we, we, we skip over the greatest, juiciest magic that we actually have. The, the, the skeleton key that opens every door is us being in that high vibration, when you are enthusiastic, it's amazing what you will do, how you'll be received, what ideas will come to you, and how things start to move. When you're in a state of joy, when you're in a state of grace, it's amazing how palpable your beingness is and how it becomes like a fait accompli. And I will say to you, and I'd like you to try this on, I never said the words, I'm trying. I never said to somebody, I'm trying to start a podcast. I, I actually just said, I'm doing a podcast. Like I'm doing this. And I remember when I had eventually had some famous guests on and I had Jenna Fisher on who played Pam on The Office. And she said she moved out to Los Angeles from St. Louis and didn't have any contacts or anything like that. And her friends were saying things like, I moved here to be an actor and I'm going to give it a year. I'm going to give it a whole year. And if at, if at the year mark, I'm not really finding work. I'm going to go home to wherever a home was. And she knew every time someone would say that, that meant their dreams weren't going to happen because they were putting a timeline on something rather than saying, oh, I am an actor. Like, this is what's up. This is what I'm doing. And so she said, oh, I'm an actor. This is what I'm doing. And sure enough, she and her next door neighbor, who was Jason Siegel at the time, decided if we're not going to be cast and stuff, let's just film our own stuff. And with that energy of I am an actor, they shot this mockumentary, not knowing there was something called The Office that had a very similar genre about it, which was going on in, in, in Britain at the time. It went to a film festival. And it was literally the same concept of The Office. And a woman happened to watch the film festival screening and called Jenna and said, I'd like you to audition for this part. And when she got the description of the part, she called Jason and said, there's no way in hell. We've just been working this muscle of this exact concept for a year. And I just get this call. This, this is insane. And of course she walked in and she was the first person cast on The Office and they didn't know that that show would be a success. They didn't think anyone would get it. And she said they would just wait for the call after every show aired the first eight episodes to find out they were canceled. And in fact, it is the number one watch show to date 
Even now with everything available on streaming, The Office is the most watched show. And I'm so proud to tell you that I've interviewed both Jenna Fisher, Rain Wilson, and also Brian Baumgartner who played Kevin on The Office, which has been so much fun to interview all of them. What does that tell you? It tells you that as Colleen said, you can learn all of the things that you have to do. And we're gonna teach you during this week, a lot of those things, probably all of those things, a lot of those things. And then what's gonna need to happen is your alignment, right? Like it is undeniable that the reason why Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson stand out so much is because they had an energy. They were so iconic in their energy, right? Like you can be an amazing player and you can get all the points, but if your energy is not there, it, it doesn't move people in the same way. It just is different. And the energy is really the 99% of the heavy lifting. So let's get into this. So today we're going to talk about creating this binge-worthy podcast that actually creates so much engagement for you. And what I want you to understand is you are right where you need to be. This is the time to podcast. This really is time because what I did, and this is something that not everybody knows or not everybody would assume, I started recording my podcast, my podcast that aired, my first episode came out January of 2017. And when do you think I started that podcast? My podcast came out January of 2017. And when do you think, take a guess, that I started my podcast? Do you think I started it in January? Do you think I started it in December? When do you think I started it? So the answer is yes. Let's talk a few of you know. I started in October. I started in October. Now, why would I do that? Why would I start in October when the show's in January? And we're going to talk about that today. So I did that because if your show is coming out in January, do you want to air an episode and then be scrambling to record the next episode so that you actually can show up every week? Or do you want to batch about 10 episodes between October and January and then when your show starts in January, you've got these 10 shows in the can that start to come out and drip. And you're now recording the next month's show and the next month's show. And why else would you want to do that? You'd want to do that so you can start promoting the show before it comes out. And now let's talk about anything at all that you've ever known about, whether it was a movie whether it was an Apple product like an iPhone, do you hear about it the day that it comes out? When Pixar is launching a new movie, do you hear about the movie the day it's in the box office? Or have you been hearing about it for months? Have you started to see them put little toys in Happy Meals and you're saying, huh, I wonder what's coming. There's a toy in the Happy Meal. This is a toy I've never seen before. Oh, there's a movie coming out. Have you started to see billboards? Have you started to see little reels? Have you started to see little trailers? And then you see different trailers, then you see longer trailers, then you see different billboards. Why are they doing that? Now, here's the other thing I really want you to hear. Can you imagine how ridiculous it would be for Pixar to say, we've had it with doing any marketing. We are Pixar. Hell no, forget it. We're going to launch it. We're going to put something in the box office or on streaming on this date. And if people don't show up at that box office, that just shows we're a failure because we're so big that people, no, because it's not the way human beings connect and relate and do anything. We have an experience of things before we actually go to purchase a ticket to a Pixar movie, before you actually go and buy the new eye product, the iPhone, the iWatch, you started to understand it. You started to research it. You started to get excited about it. You started to feel the colors and the shapes and what's different and the camera and the lenses, because that's just called human behavior 101. So when people say to me, I put out my podcast and no one's listening, I say, did you do any kind of communication. And I say communication because as Seth Godin would tell you, marketing is communicating. That's it. So did you communicate? Did you tell a story? Did you let people know? And they're like, well, yeah, I did. It came out. Nobody heard it. Then I stomped my feet, just, you know, jumped up and down, 
put it in my, you know, emailed five friends. I'm like, well, this is something where we have to change the dance, right? When we launch a podcast, just like anything else, one another, another thing that you can learn from Seth Godin that he taught me is that business is two words, two words, write them down, two beautiful words combined, radical. The first word is radical. The second word is empathy. Business at its heart is radical empathy. What that means is if I'm making something, if I'm making gluten-free cake pops, or I'm making a movie, or I'm writing a book, I am thinking about who is consuming this. And I am, I'm thinking about how busy these people are and how we are all really self-involved, right? We've got the dog that has to go to the vet. We've got our relationship we want to work on. We have our own job. So my empathy says, no, I want to make a deposit. I want to keep depositing into people. I want to make a relationship with people. I want to bring people into the conversation. I want to make them feel that it's for them, that it's about them. I want to understand them. I want to hit the bullseye. And then when something comes out, of course, they're going to want it because they're a part of it because it's for them, right? Because the difference between a hobby and a business is that a hobby, you cannot care about anyone. You can just fuel yourself. You can just do for you. But as soon as you're making something that you want someone to love, you want someone to subscribe, right? Then we need to think, what is in it for them? How do I make this feel like something that is aligned with me and it's for them? And I will tell you, people think that you have to choose between being in integrity and being there for other people. But the truth is we were all created. We were all assigned to to give our gifts to make this world better. And if you think about it, the true artists that have, have been iconic in this world, whether it's Michelangelo or somebody like John Williams or even Sarah Bareilles, who wrote the music to Waitress, I think about Waitress and it's so incredible and it's so powerful. But Sarah Bareilles herself, thank God, she didn't have that story. The story of Waitress, it's about a waitress who's in an abusive, physically abusive marriage who winds up getting pregnant and winds up having the courage to change her life and leave with her daughter, okay? Sarah Bareilles wrote all of the music to this show, having never had, thank God, that experience. But she used her light, she used her beautiful talent and told the story and sang the songs and then performed it on Broadway. And artistry is that. It's about telling a story. Lin-Manuel Miranda wrote the music to Moana and it's incredible. And he wasn't a little girl who lived on an island who went to just find the heart of Tahiti, right? But he understands that. And so he was asked to see the pain, to make something universal with his talent. Does that make sense? So we want the radical empathy. And so what that means is that we are going to pick a date on the calendar right now. The reason we do this launch in September is because I can only teach you that which I understand. And this is what I did. I, I chose January. Now, why do you think I would choose January to start a podcast? I could have chose July. I could have chose any month, right? J- January is the month where human beings decide to better their life. They want to listen to something. They want to read a book. They want to spend more time doing things even just for themselves. Like, I'm going to make a date night. It's January. We're going to make date nights. I'm going to be more with my girlfriends. I'm going to start a book club. I'm going to go to the gym. January is the month where people develop new, what's the word? Habits. They develop new habits. And so this is the time for you right now. Now is the time. Not January 1st. You don't start the podcast January 1st. You publish the podcast the first week of January. You start the podcast this fall. And then you look back and say, and you can write this down right now, 2022 was the best year ever. This is you in December saying this to your parents, saying this to your partner, saying this to your friend. 2022 was the best year ever because I took Kathy Heller's workshop and I started a podcast and now it's now it's out. And I want to tell you something about why this is also so important that you put this out. And then we'll talk even more about what you're going to do and how you're going to engage people and promote the crap out of this. But why this is so important is because let's face it, every one of us is dying to feel that we live up to our potential. 
And every one of us has some point of view and something to say and something we feel strongly about and some part of us that feels like it got through a really dark time. And what's interesting is that there's another part of us that wants to belong, that wants to be liked. And that just like Pauline said earlier, sometimes we believe that things just can't feel so good. We also believe that we can't quite be our authentic out loud self. But I want you to think about the people in your life that you admire, the people in this world who we all look up to. I want you to think about Serena Williams and Oprah and Beyonce and Meryl Streep and Magic Johnson and any athlete, any musician, any actor, any politician, anyone who you actually admire. And I want you to know that there is one thing that they all have in common, which is instead of trying to fit in, what do they do instead? They can't fit in because they stand out. They stand out. And so we have a double bind because there is a part of us since first grade, since seventh grade, when the girls were mean, since your uncle said something that was projecting, whenever it happened, there is a part of us that is trying to do two things at the same time, trying to live up to our own potential, which we all secretly very much know that it's there. And then there's a part of us that wants everyone to like us, everyone, and wants to fit in, blend in, and not stand out. But if you want to have something called a legacy, if you want to feel freedom, if you want to feel that you actually made your mark, then there must be something about you that stands out. And when you do that, you don't do that for yourself. You do that on behalf of the collective. You are rising as an ambassador on behalf of every person who doesn't feel safe enough yet to stand out, but you did. And that's why leadership is such a fulfilling process. And it doesn't matter after a while if somebody comments that they hate your show or they think your voice is annoying because you already have inside of you the greatest treasure because you are free. And in your freedom, you just took so many people with you who couldn't yet do that. And so for me, podcasting got to be that. And there was a time I told you when I came to LA and I wanted a record deal and I got one and then I got dropped. And there was a time where I then realized I don't have to wait for someone to choose me. I can choose myself. We don't, we don't live in that time anymore. It's a DIY time. It's a pick up your phone and shoot your own content. It's a record your own voice. It's a take your own photos. It's a write your own book. So there's no excuse, but what's really in the way, and Colleen said this earlier, it's about a belief about not standing out, about not feeling safe enough to do that, about that not even being available. But that's why I say it's time to podcast for so many reasons, but now we're going to get into the nitty gritty and talk about what you need to do between now and January, because in very literal terms, it's also time to podcast. Before we dive into today's workbook, Colleen, do you have any comments on anything that we've been discussing already this morning? Oh, it was also yummy because it really just brings everything home in this like nice tied little bow where it's not about what we think we have to do. It's not about what we think people want from us. It's not like what's expected. It's not any of that. It really is all of us learning to give ourselves the permission to get uncomfortable enough to realize it's actually safe not to worry so much what everyone's going to think about us or what they're going to think about the words or our opinions or our perspectives or what they think about the fact that we're actually creating a show when we can learn that our fear and anticipation around those reactions is actually the scariest part, not us actually moving towards sharing our gifts with the world. Not only will you feel so fulfilled and free, it's just literally going to change your life, right? So podcasting isn't, it's not just, nothing's ever just the thing, right? And that's, that's part of what's so special about everything Kathy does and everything she teaches you is you learn at such a deep level, oh, this isn't just something I'm going to get up and do in my day. I'm going to learn how to finally come home to me and then show other people 
how they can come home to themselves, no matter what I'm talking about. Thank you, Colleen. That is such a kind, generous thing to say. And the truth is that that is why we shape things this way. That is why we wanted to have this conversation live, right? Because it's not enough for me to give you a PDF with the things to do. I need to come into your heart, those little valves that are like open just a little like the eye of a needle and remind you of what you know to be true so that you actually step into this game called your life. And so that is why, by the way, when we do our full program, which goes through a few months, that's part of why I hired Colleen to be on this team with me, working with me, because her background is a psychologist. And then she also taught people business. And so it's just such a gift. And so when we go through this program, we're making space for you to rise. You need the courage to show up as yourself, because if you are starting to be aware of this yourself, and you can do this, you probably have already been doing this. As you scroll through content, people on Instagram, different podcasts you hear, you're going to start to hear right away. You're going to start to notice this person's in resonance, this person isn't. And then you'll look at their followers and how much engagement is there. Don't look at the number, how much engagement is there because you are speaking to humans. And so what needs to happen is you filling up the space with your truth, right? And so that's why this conversation is going to be both tactical and also really what needs to be applied is you, right? It's going to be, you're speaking through whatever microphone you're buying. You can tell when somebody is there or if they're preoccupied with how do they feel? How do they sound? You ever watch a comedian get up on stage and you feel for this person because they're so anxious that it's not fun to watch. But then sometimes somebody comes on and they're so relaxed that even if they mess up a joke, they go, you see that? Anyone can make a whole audience laugh. I made three people laugh. Now that's a skill. And then everyone laughs because they realize this person, they're not codependent. They're free. They didn't need you. They, you don't feel stressed because you feel they're relaxed. So now you just like them. You're bought in. Now you want to laugh at everything they say because they're in the state of wholeness. That's really what makes a podcast go viral. But let's talk a little bit about the tactical pieces, because this is something you need to start thinking about and you need to start putting on the calendar. Okay. So how do you attract listeners to your podcast? The first thing you're going to do is remember, you don't just launch your podcast. You intentionally walk towards the launch. So if your launch is going to be in January, which I highly suggest it is the best time every year, it comes around one time. And that is the best time. Then I would say you're going to put on the calendar that you are recording shows October and November before the holidays. Okay. That's why we did this podcast launch right now. So what is going to start to happen is you're going to decide, are you interviewing people or are you doing solo episodes? Are you doing five minute episodes? And you can play with all of it, but I'd like you to start thinking about recording those and booking those in October and November so that you have that coming out in January. And now what also is going to happen? Well, you're going to start attracting listeners now to your podcast. Well, you're going to say, Kath, how do I do that if I don't have a podcast that's up? Does anyone have a guess? How would you attract listeners over the next few months of the fall to know about a show that's coming out in January? Okay. What you're going to do is a couple things. You are going to come up with a trailer, a three minute, two minute trailer, which you're going to upload to the various platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, right? You could even just do Apple Podcasts for a while because the truth is that's where 75% of people listen to podcasts. So you could do that. But when you have a trailer up there, even if it's just a few minutes, two minutes, you're like, hey, this is Kathy Heller. I'm so excited because starting January, whatever day you decide. Now I will tell you that in podcasting, people have what's called an audio habit, which means you can tell them when to expect this. Like, hey, this podcast is going to drop on January, whatever, which is the first Tuesday of that month. And every Tuesday 
after I will be dropping a show. You can expect shows that are interviews or you can expect shows that are stories or you can expect a mixed bag. It doesn't matter. You don't need to be perfect. You just need to start. So you're going to put up a trailer and now between now and January, you're going to start having people subscribe because they can subscribe even with just there being a trailer out and they can start to get excited. Now, what else might you do between now and the time that you go and actually start having this podcast? Colleen, would you like to jump in? And then I know I'm talking a lot and then I'll come back in with more. Yeah, for sure. So one simple thing you can start doing is going on other people's podcasts, right? Because you are going to have a show to promote and it's a beautiful way to what? Find an audience, right? So you can go on shows that either A, have kind of parallel kind of topics, right? Like maybe you're super into acrylic painting and so you go on some other artist type, you know, podcasts. You can also go on podcasts of people who do the exact same thing as you, because the truth of the matter is there is no such thing as competition. We think there is. That's kind of our ego-based self coming at things from scarcity and limitation, because the truth is everyone does their thing in a unique way. We all have an interest in something and we're following them. And like, think about it. Don't we all love like oh my God, there's another store that has like these cool handbags as the, and it's like, we can love all of them, right? Or we resonate with certain ones more than others. And that's all normal and good and okay. So don't hesitate. Like collaboration, right? Is really sort of the key term to remember. I want to say something about this too. I want you guys to understand because you might be sitting here thinking, Colleen just said that I should go on other podcasts, but nobody's going to have me on their podcast because I'm not a famous person or I don't have a book out or why would somebody have me on their podcast? I want you to understand something right now as we sit here, because this is some stuff that you wouldn't necessarily know unless you had experience with it. Even if you went on a podcast, okay, of somebody who has, let's say on their Instagram page, they have 330 total, 330 total followers, which is like their friends and family. And most people, by the way, the average amount of social media followers that even your friends has is around 1400. So a lot of people have followers like that, but let's say you were to go on somebody's show and you're like, well, this isn't going to make a difference. They only have like 26 listeners a week. It makes a huge difference. And let me tell you why. When you launch your podcast that week that it's going to go really live, not just the trailer, but the podcast is live January, whatever it is. If you in a 24 hour period had 150 people subscribe to your podcast, it'll go up on the chart. People will see it and you will be able to take a screenshot and say, oh my God, today in history, my podcast is number 42. How is that possible? When I first started my podcast, first one, first episode, before I had any social media followers, I was at zero before I had anything, but I did, I'm going to tell you other things that I did that got me a little bit of that interaction with just a small group. The day my podcast launched in January, we made it to number three on the overall podcast charts. I'm saying it was a picture of Joe Rogan's face because at the time he wasn't exclusive to Spotify since the Apple chart. It was like Joe Rogan, Ben Shapiro, Ira Glass, and like me, like top five, because the algorithm is set that if there's a concentrated amount of people that subscribe in a 24 hour period, you're actually going to go bump up on the chart, which is a really cool thing because now you, you have some momentum. Okay, so that's number one. But number two is if you were to go on somebody's podcast and they only have 39 listeners, but they have 39 listeners every single week, that's 39 people who are likely to add your show to their list of shows because the data shows that people who listen to podcasts add more podcasts up to seven. They wind up listening to an average of seven a week, seven different shows because they become podcast junkies. So that doesn't mean that your friend needs to feel that you're competing all of a sudden, but rather it's the opposite. People start to get addicted to the habit of listening to content and they're going to add your show. So going on other people's podcasts, whether they have a micro audience that's super engaged or they have a big audience is going to make a difference. And now um, let's, let's move through a few of these other things that you can do. You can, um, do podcast swaps with other people. And I want you to know something. 
When I say you can go on other people's podcasts, another brilliant way to do this, if you do have an Instagram account, is to go live on Instagram with somebody else, even if you have 38 followers and she has 109 followers, because when you go live, both of your followers are aware that you're live and you can download, there's a way, it gives you a little choice to download that audio. And that audio from the live can become your podcast for both of you. You could put that on both of your podcast feeds. So what does that do? It sort of, it it repurposes it in many different good ways because what's gonna happen is, Now, if you made a, if you made a commitment that over the next several weeks, you let your audience on social media know that you're going to be live every Thursday doing a live. And then every time you go live with that person, whoever you wind up swapping with, you say, Hey, I'm here with Michelle. Michelle has a podcast all about dogs. I do a podcast all about families. And I think this is related because every family seems to benefit from having a puppy, whatever it is. Then you say, by the way, I have a trailer up on Apple Podcasts. The link to it is in my bio or the link to it is here or DM me for the link. You can go ahead right now and subscribe, okay? So that is another way for you to keep engaging with people. You can also go and find Facebook groups that have genres that are similar to your podcast and you could let people know how excited you are, right? Sometimes people have rules about links. So instead of putting a link to your podcast, but you could be excited and say, I'm so excited and you could be vulnerable. And instead of doing a promotion, because that doesn't feel a lot like human you know, empathy, you could be vulnerable and say, this is so exciting. I'm also, I'm both nervous and excited. I just recorded my first trailer and uh, my podcast is coming out. Has anyone else recorded a podcast? Comment below. My podcast is going to be about this. Does anyone want to come on my podcast? You're going to get like 115 comments of people who want to be on your podcast. And you could do that in a few different Facebook groups. And that becomes a really cool portal to having more people already there. So when your podcast goes live in January, you're starting to get 45 people, 65 people, 111 people. There's an audience that's starting to find out about this. You could also do a giveaway for people leaving a review and sharing. They can leave a review for that trailer. They can say things like, this is such a cool topic. I'm so excited. This is so great that you're doing this. Those reviews help you again in the algorithm to move up and be more visible. And you could say something like, I really appreciate the support and the review. And I will be announcing on my first episode, I will be reading one of these reviews and I will be giving away a a session with me because I do sleep training for kids or I will be giving away, um, I will read over, I'm an editor. So I'll read over the first paragraph of your book proposal or I'll give you a $5 Starbucks card. It doesn't matter, but you could do something like that. And now, I want to talk about how you build a super engaged audience with just a few people, because I really want you to understand what Malcolm Gladwell understands, what Seth Godin understands, what Adam Grant understands, because it's very often, as John Wooden used to say, that we make great the enemy of good, and then we don't actually move forward. But the actual truth in the reality of it, the data that has come in from people looking at how things have grown is it's about deep engagement. And I want to talk about a great example that Seth Godin actually taught me that will give you a real clear sense of how you're going to grow this podcast. So are you ready? Type a one in the chat. If you are having fun today, if you are feeling like this is worth your time today, if you are feeling like you are proud of yourself for being here because your brain is actually spinning with good ideas right now. Okay. I'm so excited and thank you for the hearts. All right. So here we go. How many of you, how many of you like Taylor Swift? Just say yes in the chat. If you like Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift is so talented. Taylor Swift is great. And by the way, if you don't like her, that's okay too. We all get to be we all, we all get to have preferences of what restaurants we like and what podcasts we like, and that's fine. But I want to make a point about Taylor Swift, okay? Taylor Swift is somebody who has been at the top of the Apple, uh, the, the billboard charts, okay? She's somebody who has many number one singles. She is somebody who fills up stadiums, right? Thousands of people. She's somebody who a lot of people, even my mom, knows who she is, right? If I went to Vietnam or Vancouver, people will know who Taylor Swift is, right? She's very, very famous. 
Now let's talk about the Grateful Dead. Now, I am not personally a fan of the Grateful Dead. I actually don't think I know a Grateful Dead song, but I think that even proves the point even more, okay? If I asked you, who do you think has made more money, Taylor Swift or the Grateful Dead? What would you have thought the answer was? If I asked you, who do you think is more successful, Taylor Swift or the Grateful Dead? What would you have thought the answer was? I guess it depends how you define success, okay? But I also think it's important to understand what it means to be a super fan. Not a fan, but a super fan. And I can tell you that in this example, the Grateful Dead wins. The Grateful Dead has super fans. And here's how you know. Because the Grateful Dead was never on the top of the chart. Not one time. And they weren't on the radio. They weren't on mainstream radio. And here's what you also have to know. When they did research to ask people who are Grateful Dead fans how many concerts they went to, the answer is very different than the research that came back about Taylor Swift fans. Taylor Swift fans will tell you, I love Taylor. She's so talented. I can't believe she's been writing music like this since she's like zero years old. I've seen her in concert twice and it was like the best. But if you ask a Grateful Dead fan about their feelings about the band, how many concerts they've been to, they will tell you, I'm obsessed with the Grateful Dead. I've seen them 54 times. In fact, I see every single show. In fact, when they're on tour, I buy tickets to 11 shows. In fact, I don't have a record of theirs. I don't have six records of theirs. I have 38 records of theirs. And that is so powerful. And we don't realize how much we're looking out here for answers instead of in here. And what we think is that more people, more followers, more numbers means more impact, more success. It really actually is about the depth. It's about the depth. And so podcasting, it takes you out of the race that you never wanted to be racing anyway. It's not about how many followers. In fact, with a podcast, it's not visible how many downloads that podcast has. It's not visible because that's not what it's about. It's about the depth. So what you want is to be more like the Grateful Dead in this scenario. You want super fans. Colleen, anything you'd like to add to that conversation? Yeah, it's sometimes we think, like Kathy often gets at, it's, it's, it's breadth, it's numbers. We're so conditioned to think that like, oh my God, did anyone like my post that I put up? How many people liked it? Like, what's this? What's my total number of followers? We're so used to thinking that way. And we can't emphasize enough that you want not just your presence dropped in, but you want other people's presence. Like that's what is so rewarding, right? You don't want to be standing in a theater on stage talking and 90% of the seats with people in it are like looking at their phones and they're like talking to the person beside them. So there's all this noise and chatter that doesn't feel good for you and it's not serving them. So what we want more than anything is engagement. And so as you move forward, watch that part of yourself that's like, I only got five downloads. Imagine those five people sitting on the couch in your living room. Like how cool is it that five people wanted to tune in and listen to you in that moment? And when you focus on those five and how amazing those five felt, they're gonna multiply and multiply and multiply in the right resonance, right? Because it's not a numbers game. It feels like it has to be a numbers game because when I have more numbers, I'm going to make more revenue or I'm going to have more impact. And oddly, that's not the factor that makes the difference. And so just notice that and notice how your brain will sort of want to pull you over there and you can see it and acknowledge it and that's okay. And we can kind of step out of that and remind ourselves how cool that I reached eight people today. How cool that I reached 20 people this week or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. And it's so important because gosh, Colleen, I mean, we're, 
we all have an ego. I mean, let's yeah. face it, we do. And then we get bought into this comparisonitis and then we're looking in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. And then we get out of the game. We take ourselves out of the game because we're like, I can never run that race. And then you're like, wait, my soul never wanted to run that race because it knew better, right? Yeah. And I think about my friend, Candace Nelson, when she started Sprinkles Cupcakes and this was insane at the time because everybody was in a low carbs phase, right? It was like South Beach diet and Atkins. And she went to all these banks to ask for venture capital. And people were like, no one's going to, not in LA, no one's going to want to buy a cupcake and not like a $6 cupcake. Like you could go to the grocery store and get a 75 cent cupcake. And she thought, I don't know. There's a little voice in me that says people want to have an experience, right? When you go to the grocery store, you might feel the utility. You check off the box. Like I need a cupcake for a kid's birthday, but it's not an experience like going into a bakery and there's beautiful branding and there's fresh, fresh, hot out of the oven, fresh baked goods with organic icing that really feels like something. So she decided I'm doing it. So she rented this tiny little tiny, I mean, it's still there. It's on little Santa Monica and Beverly Hills. It cost them a fortune. And the line was around the block, around the block. And when it was around the block for like two weeks in the, in a row, there was a, uh, a blog that goes out in LA, uh, Daily Candy, and they wrote about this line around the block. And so what Colleen was just saying is really important. Please don't miss this. You know, it's one thing for you to have five people in your living room or 500 people in a stadium. But if they're not so, so into what you're doing, it doesn't matter if there's 2,500 people there, but if there's five people there and those five people are at peak satisfaction, peak, they will be compelled to each tell someone else. And now you have what Malcolm Gladwell would call a tipping point. So instead of saying to yourself, in order to start a podcast, I'm going to need a lot of followers and listeners, subscribers. And in order to eventually monetize this, I'm going to need a lot of people. You need a obsessive audience and it could be five, it could be 30. And now you have what's called, this is a boiling point. I want to give you an example of how we know that this is true. My friend, Britt Morin, who is so incredible, you should follow her anyway, she raised $100 million in VC money during the pandemic for venture capital for women-owned businesses. She was one of the first employees at Facebook, and she does so many cool things. But she told me that when she was younger, she worked um, at, at, at Facebook, and Mark Zuckerberg came out at one point and said to her, oh my God, we just got the research. We just got all the data. We got the numbers we are going to be the biggest thing that's ever hit the internet. And she said, ooh, 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 what, what did you find out? And he said, our virality, the number, are you ready for the number? And she said, yeah, I'm ready. And he said, it's 1.3. And she scratched her head and said, did he say 1.3 or 100.3? Like 1.3 has never been an interesting number in my life. Like, I don't know what one out of what, <laughs> two? Like, why is one impressive? And so she said this to him, this is early days, okay, early days of Facebook. And he goes, oh my God, he's like literally like pacing around. He's like, we're going to be billionaires. We're going to be so rich. This is going to take, it's going to change the way people interact. This is going to change everything. And she's like, 1.3, 1.3, are you sure? 1.3, why is that so impressive? He said, Britt, you're not getting it. Let me tell you what I just said to you. What I just found out from our just first batch of looking at the data is that every user, every single user, everyone, every person who uses Facebook is telling 1.3 people. They're not thinking about telling somebody. They're telling 1.3 people. And she goes, but that's not even two. And he goes, oh, I don't care. It means at the tipping point, it means every person is compelled to tell another person. And it means that there's no, there's no question. It means they are telling someone. It means they definitely told 1.3 people. So then it's done. It's viral. It's going to be a worldwide sensation. Where did we see that? We saw that in the pandemic. When the CDC and all these places we got so exhausted from hearing from because it was just such a nightmare and we all went through it together, they kept saying something similar. They kept talking about the R factor and they kept saying it has to be under one, it has to be under one and it's over one, it's over one, it's over one. And what that meant was if it was a fait accompli that every human who had COVID 
it wasn't, a, it wasn't even a possibility. It was a for sure definite that they would transmit it to one other person. They said, the hospitals are going to be overrun. This is going to be around the world. This is too scary. We're in like hot, hot, red, urgent, 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 because it's at one. One. That means, really get this, when somebody is for sure going to transmit something to someone else, it goes around the world. That's how it goes. That's how fast it goes. So what most people do is they set out to make something that everyone kind of likes. And the reason they're doing that is because they're trying to get everyone to like something. They want everyone. They want to win a popular vote. They want a lot of likes. And when they do that, they totally fail. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want a stadium of people who kind of liked it because it died. That's where it died. It died that day. Even if you filled a stadium, if you could get all these people to just try it, to just come to your podcast and there's a hundred thousand of them and they kind of like it, it died a death that day. That was the worst day for you. But if you had 10 people and they were obsessed, your podcast will become the top 1% podcast. There is no other way about it. Please type a one in the chat if you totally get what I just said. Because if there, I'm telling you, I told you yesterday that you would come through this free boot camp, and I told you that I wouldn't do this unless I knew for sure that you would learn things that would help you in your life and in your business and to start this podcast. I said to you, yeah, at the end of this, I'm going to tell you that I have a whole program that we run live that you can buy, that you can be a part of. And I said, for some of you, you're going to say, but I got so much out of this free content. And P.S., if you haven't already subscribed to my podcast, you need to subscribe to this podcast because it's also free and it comes out at least twice a week, sometimes three times, sometimes five times. You can go to kathyheller.com slash podcast. Make sure that you subscribe. And if you subscribe and review, you are going to be part of being what's entered into our homework giveaways. You have to subscribe and you have to review in order to be part of it because we want you to practice that which you are going to be doing for yourself. Also, if you don't like my podcast, you shouldn't continue listening to this boot camp because why would you want to learn from someone who's teaching you to do a thing that you don't like how they do it? That's not a great idea. So I figured probably a good idea anyway that you're listening to the podcast and making sure you like it. So you need a small group of people. How does that completely and totally change your life? Because it's doable. But it's doable when you then appreciate what Colleen and I said early on. Why would someone be obsessed with a podcast? Is it because you use the right microphone? Is it because you had the right hashtag? And this is what Colleen and I see because we've been coaching thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people in creating their business and growing their empire. They're all focused on the wrong things. So it's not growing. Because the reason someone's going to be obsessed is because you showed up. It's because they connected with you. I was a huge fan of, I still am, but it, 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 it was a thing. I went to see Dear Evan Hansen on Broadway. I flew to see Ben Platt in Dear Evan Hansen on Broadway. And it was a religious experience. I completely changed as a result of sitting in the theater, watching him deliver that performance. And I saw it on tour um, and I saw it on Broadway again. I've seen it four times. And it was the time I saw it with him that I could cry just thinking, I just thinking of the amount of courage and vulnerability that he brought to that performance it was like the entire play was like the scene in Steel Magnolias where Sally Fields loses it. Oh, I could cry thinking about it when her daughter dies oh, and she's at the funeral and she's like, she's like, no, no. And she like loses her freaking mind and everyone's in tears. If you remember that scene, it's just where she took us in that moment, what she was willing to do, how she was willing to go there. It's so beautiful. It's such a gift. Where else did you see that? First American Idol, season one, Kelly Clarkson wins. She sings a moment like this and she breaks into tears because she's a girl from Texas. 
because she's just a girl who can't help it. She knows she's being filmed. She's no, she knows she's on national TV, but she has a heart and she can't help it. She loses it. She loses it. There's never been a moment on Idol like that again. In fact, every season is just still trying to get the juice out of that moment. And that's why she's who she is. And every other person who came out of Idol is like, you kind of know who they are, you kind of don't. And that's why her show, her talk show is so successful. And she's not crying every day on her talk show, but she's there, she's herself. She's, and why did Oprah become so successful? Oprah is the first one to go, John Legend. Like she loses her mind. She's so excited. She puts her whole self in it. If she's excited, if she's sad, if she's passionate, if she's upset, you know about it. And when you see a person who shows up like that, you're obsessed. You're just like, oh my God, this person is present. This person has a whole range of feelings and I get to be witness to them. So do you have to cry like Ben Platt and Kelly Clarkson at the end of season one, Idol? No, but think about the people who move you. Why do they move you? Because they're moved because they're excited, because they're so passionate, because they're so connected, because they're, they're, they're in what they're doing and they're so connected to what they're doing. And so think back, have you had a moment where you witnessed something like that and you're like, I think I'm obsessed now with this person. So I will follow this person now and always follow this person. Like think about the people that you follow, right? Like I follow Reese Witherspoon. Why? Because I know how much she cares about women in media. And I've heard her voice crack and I've heard her stand up and say, we're changing this and this is what it's going to look like. And that moves me that she has a point of view, right? So think about what it takes to actually grow to the top 1%. And this is this is the thing about it. I was talking to my friend Kate Northrup yesterday because she came to visit. She was here in person. And she said, you know, it's amazing is that it's always a it's a disproportionate reward that you get for this stuff. Like it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. It's not like you show up with courage and presence and enthusiasm and passion and, and compassion. And there's like a little bit of a reward. It's always like you do this. <laughs> And the reward is way beyond what you could ever see because the beauty of it is, you guys, this world that we think could be really negative or this world that we think at best is neutral, it's not. It's actually net positive. As soon as you get out of fear-based thoughts, as soon as you get out of resistance and you kind of go all in and you put a stake in the ground and you have an opinion and you have a voice and you have a heart and you open it up, the world responds. The world actually responds to that. That's the magic. Colleen, how does this feel for you? What are you thinking about as we go through this? Oh, it's so powerful because it's all it is. Like you've, you've said a few times today, and I just want to echo it is it's just the courage to stand out. It's finding the courage to just be you and being you is standing out because it means you're not trying to dilute who you are to fit in with like the normal expectations of what everyone thinks the boxes are you're supposed to fit into. And when we can step into that space, like Kate, so beautiful what she said, it's like exponential, the rewards that will just find their way to you. You don't even have to know what they are or how they'll come, but you will be a match for them. And it's the best gift you can ever give yourself. It's the best gift. It's the best gift. And the other thing Kate and I were saying sitting on the couch yesterday is this is as good as it gets. <laughs> Meaning like whatever moment you're in, yeah, it's all there for you because the reward of this life is feeling like yourself. It's feeling free. And nothing external has to happen for you to have that experience. Mm -hmm. You just have to open the door that's already open. It's like, I heard Ellen say when she talks about coming out, like I heard her say something and I, I know some people like her, some people don't, that's not really relevant to this part of the story. But I heard her say that when she finally came out, it was because she had this dream. She had a dream, Do you ever heard this? That um, there was a bird in a cage but the door to the cage was open mm -hmm. and then the bird flew out and she realized the cage door was never shut. She just hadn't allowed herself. Right. Um, and then it felt like freedom 
to be like, oh, this is actually me, right? For whatever it's worth, whether you like me or not like me. And then people decided to like her and not like her for other reasons, right? It's like, you can never control, right? And I don't know where personally she might be fun. She might be horrible. It's not really the point, but the point is the cage door is open. That's the point. Yeah. And this is as good as it gets. And in every moment you could gift yourself a feeling of expansion and what's on the other side of you showing up with passion and compassion and enthusiasm. The rewards are so giant. You know, it's just, I say to my kids, my daughter told me today, I had so much homework last night. And I say, well, you know how I feel about it. Just do your best, like whatever your best is, because I don't have an agenda that you're going to get the best grades to get to the best college. So you can get the best job. Like ultimately I really want you to solve a problem and be creative and show up in the world at whether you're 16 or 17 or 18 or 22, whenever that feels like the time. So you don't really need to get good grades in order for you to do that. But going to school right now, it's good. It's good discipline. It's also good to make friends and that's it. And she's like, I know mom. I tell her that every time we talk about this. So that's really what's at the end of the rainbow is you deciding it's time to really go and be yourself and be live. So I want to tell you now a couple of things that are going to happen. Number one, if you watch this and you're commenting, you're already in. If you watch the replay and you comment on the replay, if you watch all of them at the end of the week, those of you who watch all of this content, um, we're going to put you in a raffle to win an Apple watch. It's number one. Number two, we're going to announce now the names of those of you who won the raffle who did your homework yesterday. And I'm also going to tell you before I announce those names that we're going to give you homework every day. So there's another opportunity for you to win prizes and really clearly after everything I just said, the win is that you're actually going to do this and feel like you're 25 feet tall because you did this work and it's going to have such ripples in your own heart and in your own world. But the, the questions are going to be posted after we're finished with this live. Colleen will post the homework for day two and the questions are going to be the following, but they will be posted. I'm just letting you know right now what they are. You're going to number one, list your favorite three podcasts. And what is it about each of these podcasts that makes you love them? Because you want to start to reverse engineer why you love something, right? Number two, you're going to write down how might you incorporate a piece of what you love in another podcast into your own podcast? Is there a format that you like? Is there an energetic to it? Is there something about it? And number three, you're going to go look on social media feeds for your favorite podcasts. And you're going to notice what how do they promote their podcast? Because we're going to talk more about that tomorrow. Is there something they're doing on social? And like I said, we are going to be here to create valuable free content because guess what? That's what you do as a podcaster. You create valuable free content. So I'm no stranger to making free things that are valuable all the time. That's why I have a podcast. Um, and some of you are going to say, this was so valuable, but I need more. And we will tell you at the end of this workshop, how you can join our full program. Um, but I will give you a sneak peek and say that tomorrow uh, we will announce a fast action bonus for those of you who sign up within the first 24 hours. And if you want to even look and see if you want to be that person, because we're going to offer something tomorrow where the first hundred people who join are going to get a free ticket to something as well as some other really good bonuses. And if you want to get in on that, in case you think that might fill up, you can go to kathyheller.com slash join and look at the different options. But the reason I mention it to you is because as you can see, I'm trying to shove as much as I can into these five days. And there's for every sentence I'm saying, I just need more time to tell you even more things. And also I think information at the end of the day doesn't necessarily do the heavy lifting because if my cookbook and the information that's in there was really enough, I would be cooking these gourmet healthy dinners. But what would probably be more helpful is if I had someone come to my house for a certain amount of weeks and sit next to me and go through the process with me. And so part of why we offer a longer container is because we want to actually do the work with you. We want you to, for sure, have an insurance policy that you are starting this podcast and you're having mentorship. So instead of having an online class that sits on your desktop with videos, we show up live with you. So you have the support and you have Colleen and you have me and we're answering questions and we're mentoring you. And that way you're doing your assignments and you have each other to podcast with and you have each other to help each other. And 
you get it actually done, right? You actually get it done. And so for some of you, that's going to work for you. We'll talk about that later. But I did want to let you know that we are going to do the best that we can to fill this time with as much knowledge and heart and information because we want you to walk away from this free boot camp and say, that was so freaking valuable. And I hope you're already feeling that way. So those of you who do the homework today, you're going to win again, two things. One is going to be a spiritual gangster sweatshirt. They have this adorable sweatshirt that says, trust the universe. Um, and if that one is already sold out, we'll find another cute one. But I love that brand. And I actually had the owner and founder of that brand, Ian LaPatton on my show. That's a great podcast episode. That's a great podcast episode about how he was a lawyer. And then he went into being a yoga teacher. And then he played hip hop in the middle of his class one day, which no one ever does. And one of his students says, oh, you're a spiritual kind of gangster. And he was like, did you say spiritual gangster? That is so cool. And he printed it on 10 white t-shirts, just 10 spiritual gangster and sold them out. And then his friend was like, why don't you just go across the street to like another store and see if they would carry them. And he started a global brand, which is so successful and also so fun for people like me who love to see spiritual things written on t-shirts and have yoga clothes. And even if I don't go to the yoga class, I like to wear them. So we're going to give you a spiritual gangster sweatshirt and three of you will win that tomorrow. If you do today's homework tomorrow, we'll announce that. And you'll also win another $50 Starbucks gift card because I go to Starbucks every day and I realize it's not for the coffee because the coffee's okay. It's this experience of saying, hi, I would like, you want to know my drink? You want to know what it is? Venti iced decaf Americano with sweet cream, cold foam. And I mean, it just feels so seen when I get to say how, and this by the way is a, a reusable cup and I love these. I have like 10 of them and I just bring my cup and they fill it for me and I wash it and bring it back. But then my daughter bites on this plastic straw. That's okay. Cause we get to wash it and take care of the environment. So those of you who do your homework, you're going to win $50 to Starbucks and you're going to win a spiritual gangster sweatshirt. If you do your homework tonight. However, we want to mention who won by doing last night's homework. And let me just remind you what you won. The three of you whose name we're going to call, you won a pair of Kendra Scott earrings. Kendra, I had on the podcast, her podcast episode will drop soon. And you won a $50 Starbucks gift card. So Colleen, tell them who won the yes. homework. So our three lucky winners, number one is Mona Deloach. Number two is Carrie Horeen Young. And number three is Amy Lowney. So congratulations. You can all email hello at kathyheller.com and we will connect you and hook you up with your prizes. Oh my gosh. It's so fun. Look, you come here and it is like Christmas. It is like Oprah. You get a car, you get a taco, you get more things. So come on back so that you get another chance to, and really the win. And I hope that this is clear is that you're sitting here digesting things that will actually help you start your podcast. And we have so much more to go. We have a whole nother, actually three days. Tomorrow is day three of this like set of three classes. And then we're going to have two days of an after party Thursday, Friday, where we're actually going to call some of you up and coach you on your title, your theme. That's going to be super fun. So that'll be part of the after party. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy that. And, um, and yeah, I really enjoy the connecting pieces. And so part of what I do at the Kathy Heller brand is I don't just teach programs, but I have retreats and we just did one at my house last week. And so you'll see when you go to kathyheller.com slash join to join the podcast program, that there's a gold option. And there's also a platinum option, which we're only going to have 18 spots for, but it includes a retreat at my home in person, which is really special. And I love being able to create that space, but even in the gold option, what's really fun. It is the coaching piece, right? It is the actually getting to tease it out and having accountability and doing homework and making sure that you're doing this with somebody. And we can answer more questions about that as we go and we can coach you. And I really suggest keep coming back because you want to get the most out of this. This is free. We only do this once a year. So keep coming back and we'll have time at the end of the week to answer whatever questions we did not get to that you might have. Like, how do you license a song to a podcast or 
What does it cost um, when people buy an ad? What do they pay? We'll talk about a CPM. We'll talk about how you can set your rates. We'll talk about how you can do sponsorships. Tomorrow's day is all about monetizing a podcast. It is all about making money from the podcast. So I would definitely come back tomorrow because you want to make money from your podcast. Why not? Why not get paid to sit in your sweats and have conversations that change your life anyway, and hopefully fuel people to be obsessed and tell their friends. I hope that this was really fun for you. It was so fun for me. Colleen, I just love you so much. And I really, really do. And um, this is amazing. We're excited and we will see you. We'll see you tomorrow. Do your homework.